good morning. Good morning. In the name of Jesus, Father, we speak to the airways. We command no interference this morning. In the name of Jesus. We thank you that your word is true. We thank you that your word is available to your people, oh God. Bless your name this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Pastor. We sing glory to the Lamb this morning. Good morning, Donna. Ah. Oh, Jesus. The word of the Lord will come from Luke chapter 22 this morning. Hallelujah. Just waiting for a few more people to join us. Father, we thank you for your word. It is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. We thank you, God, that your word is true. We thank you, God, that your word is the, hallelujah, is the beginning of all things. It is the end of all things. We thank you that that is all we need, hallelujah, to make it is the word, the blood, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, God. We thank you for the word this morning. We thank you, God. Your word comes to save us, set us free, and make us whole, God. We thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, God, that there is absolutely, positively none like you, God. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to call upon your name this morning. Hallelujah. Find safety, find security, find peace, God. We thank you. Hallelujah for your word this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for being our king. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for being our way. Thank you for being the gate. Hallelujah. Thank you for being the sacrifice, God. Thank you for being the lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you for being the great shepherd, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being our high priest this morning, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Daddy. We appreciate you, Father. We appreciate you, Jesus. Thank you for being the Son of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That comes to lead us into all truth, O oh God. We thank you this morning for who you are in our lives, O oh God. We thank you that when we called upon the name of Jesus, we received the Holy Spirit, God. We thank you that you dwell within us, God. I ask that you fill us afresh this morning. Hallelujah, God. Fill your people afresh this morning, God. Hallelujah. Give those who have never had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God. Even now, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, baptize them in your spirit. Baptize them in your presence, O oh God. Hallelujah. Baptize them in your truth, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the spirit of the living God this morning. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for those who have tasted and seen that the Lord was good through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, God, that they will receive a fresh baptism this morning. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for the opportunity, God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, to be found. Hallelujah, with our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Believing upon you, God. Believing in you and believing you, God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God. Help us, God, to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us, God, to trust you and to not lean into our own understanding. Hallelujah. Good morning, Evangelist Yvette. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sister Owens. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God. We thank you that even as they tag someone, they share this with someone, God. Someone will find hope in understanding the purpose of their shift, sifting, God. Hallelujah. will understand the purpose of their shifting, God. Hallelujah. They will understand the purpose, oh God. 
hallelujah God, why they were saved through their shifting and through their sifting God, glory to the Lamb of God, hallelujah God, we thank you this morning for who you are, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord our God, hallelujah God, in the name of Jesus, glory to God, glory to God. We bless your name this morning. We're going to get started in about one minute at 5.05. My birthday is 5.05, so that's always my goal, to start at the place of grace, grace. Amen. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you this morning. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is good, Daddy. Woo! Oh. I apologize. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yes, why we had to be sifted, to be shifted, to be saved. Amen. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. So let's get on over to Luke chapter 22. Amen. Luke chapter 22, starting in verse... 30. And the word of the Lord um, says, we, we, many of us are familiar with this scripture, hallelujah, as um, Peter has this conversation with our Savior and Lord, and um, where they received the Lord's Supper, and ouch, I'm sorry, I hurt my shoulder. They received the Lord's Supper, and they're having this conversation um, with Jesus. Luke chapter 22, starting in verse um, 31. Let's actually, we'll start in 31. Simon, Simon, that means Peter. I'm reading from the Amplified. Listen, Satan has demanded demanded permission to sift all of you like we. So not just you, Peter, but all of y'all. Satan wants to sift you like we. But I have prayed especially for you, Peter. We know that, that Peter, um, you know, was a little feisty. Uh, he could be a little hot-headed. He could go off and do things his way. Hallelujah. Might have been God things, but not necessarily the way that God wanted it done. And he said, I pray especially for you, Peter, that your faith, your confidence in me, Jesus, and in God, that it may not fail you, that it will not fail. He said, so especially if you, because Satan wants to sift all of y'all like we. He said, but I pray for you, Peter, especially you, you who, who I'm going to call the rock one day. Hallelujah. He said, I pray that once you have turned back to me, aha, strengthen and support your brethren in their faith. Now, there's a reason that Jesus had to say to Peter, when you've turned back, because he already knew that Peter was going to turn away. Amen. He says, so when you turn back, go and strengthen your brethren. Let me just pause right here and say, Many of us have turned back. I shared my testimony in a video on Saturday when I said, what in the world is going on? When I shared with you that God had brought conviction to me because the Lord showed me that I had gotten away, away from my prayed and fasted life. And so I had not turned away from God. I had not totally walked away from God. I had not thrown up my hands and said, I don't want anything else to do with church. I don't want anything else to do with Jesus. I had not done that, but I had turned away from what I knew to do that was right in Christ. I had turned away, uh, put it down, put it on pause, pulled back from it, uh, whether a little bit or a lot. I was not doing what I need, knew to do in this relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, through his word, through communication. 
And so, no, you're saying I didn't turn away from God. I, I haven't walked away from God. I mean, certainly I, I'm a believer. I mean, I'm at church. I'm at Bible study. Glory to God. Yes, you're doing all the routines or the traditions or the rituals of Christ. But you are not doing the things that continue to build this relationship. Amen. And so much like Peter, he was not, he had not continued, was would real soon not continue in the things that built a healthy relationship between him and God. I think it's not by coincidence that it's in Peter's book that the Bible says continue to add to your faith because you cannot stop at the faith that you had when you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You have to continue in your faith and then you have to contend for your faith. Amen. And then commune with God by faith. And so so we we contend how we confess, we contend, we continue, and we commune with our faith. And if we are not doing that, to some degree, we are shrinking back in that relationship with Jesus Christ. So here we are where Jesus tells Peter, listen, when you return, turn around and go strengthen your brethren. I was going to title uh, this message, In the Place Where You Are Tested, In the Place Where You Are Tempted, it is the way that God wants you to go and help someone else. Let me give you let me give you an example. I've said this many times that the Lord showed me uh, years ago that uh, one of the reasons the enemy wanted to use my mouth, use my tongue to lie. <laughs> glory to God was because God was going to use this very mouth to speak truth. And declare truth. And he was going to put me in the ascension gift of the prophet teacher. Well, teachers are sent to explain and expound on the word of truth. Amen. And then the prophet is sent as the voice of God, as the mouthpiece of God, to declare, thus saith the Lord. So it became very clear to me. That the enemy wanted to keep my mouth entangled in a lie. To the point, to the point, as God began to deliver me and to show me, even now, if you ask me, you call me and you say, T, what you doing? What you doing, sis? I might say nothing and the Holy Spirit will correct me and say, yes, you are. You're washing dishes. Yes, you are. You're, you're watching TV. Yes, you are. You're hanging up clothes. And I know you're saying, girl, that, no. But for me, who was a liar hallelujah the truth has to be always in my mouth the, the the a lie no matter how small as we might call it a white lie cannot be the thing that's just uh rolling off my lips consistently amen good morning sister kim good morning sister q amen you blessed me on sunday uh 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 psalmist worshiper uh sister q so the lord wants you to understand the thing that you are going to be tested in uh, is is often the thing that you are got hair in my mouth. Hallelujah! Is the thing you will be uh, tempted in. The, the is the thing in the way the thing you will be tempted and tested in is often the thing that God wants to use you to go and be delivered from when you are delivered when you have turned back and God has blessed you and delivered you and set you free and you're on your way to wholeness. That is the thing that God is going to use in you to help somebody else come out. Let me give you another example. So a thief, a thief, when your hands are used to steal, right? So if God is going to call me to be an elder, to lay hands on the sick, to, to confess your sins uh, to the elders, and you will be healed to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Well, he will tempt your hands to be doing something they should not be doing. See, I contend that a lot of times that people who are struggling with mental illness, it's because they have a great mind. It is because they have a great mind. And the enemy wants to keep you in bondage in your mind. 
Good morning. Good morning, punk and uh, uh, destiny. He wants to keep you in bondage in your mind so you cannot use that mind. He wants to keep you in the bondage of depression. He wants to keep you wavering between opinions, being bipolar. He wants to keep you in a place of schizophrenia. Hallelujah. Like you are the young man in, in the... In the um, cemetery, you know, stripping yourself naked and running through because your mind is not right. And so that is what he uses. The very thing I need you to hear me. The very thing that you struggle in is how the Lord wants to use, has determined before the foundations of the earth that he is going to use you to advance his kingdom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So a lying tongue, I'll keep you confused because conviction will say, you can't preach the truth. You can't teach the truth because you're a liar. Well, the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I remember when I said, well, when I found the scripture that said the devil is the father of lies, I said, oh, no, 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 no. I can't have two daddies now. Did I, did I help somebody? So if I'm a, anything that the devil is, God is opposite. Amen. And so if I am lying and the devil is the father of lies, but God is a God, the God of love and, and there is truth in him because Jesus is the way, the truth and life. And these three are one, God, the father and the Holy Spirit. Then God, how God's my father, not you, Satan. So no, 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 I, I had. So that's how I have uh, used the word of God. To put it on my life where I struggle. Now, does that mean I'm free of struggle? Absolutely not. That means I just got to keep going to the word and putting it on my life. And I encourage you to do the same. So here we are in verse 32 where he says, listen, when you turn back, Peter, I want you, when you have turned back, you have been strengthened. I need you to go and strengthen your brethren and support them in their faith where their faith has failed them. God said, where your faith is failing, I will restore. He will send someone to help you to re be restored in your faith. I know it looks like that uh, you're going to always be living paycheck to paycheck. That's what the devil wants you to think. I know it looks like your marriage cannot be restored, but the devil is a liar. I know it looks like your kids are from Mars. Good God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, they act like they got two heads and it's spinning around in their disobedience, in their rebellion, in their defiance. But God said, I will restore where your faith has failed. But it is imperative that you put the word of God on your situation and you not waver between the word of God and the words that are coming from your mouth. You got to stay in this word. Amen. And so when you do that, you can put a word on it. Good God almighty. So here is Peter. And in verse 34, it says, uh, and Peter says to him, Lord. I'm ready to go with you. I'll go with you to prison and I'll go with you to death. Good God almighty. And the Lord said, listen, Peter, I'm going to tell you something. Before the rooster crows today, today, you will utterly deny me three times. Now, let me tell you, let me help you to understand about sifting. Okay, because he desires to sift us all. Don't get this twisted. It wasn't just Peter. It was all the disciples, everyone who follows Christ. He desires to sift you like wheat. So so what is sifting? Now, those of you who are bakers, you, you understand what sifting is. I haven't seen a sift. Well, not the one that you, you do like this. That sifter, I see the one that you shake. I, I just saw that in the store yesterday. Maybe that's why the Lord let me see it, because I was supposed to use it today. I was supposed to buy it, but I didn't. Okay, so amen, next time. So the sifter. So the purpose of a sifter is for you to, um, let's see, how do I want to say this? Um, okay. The process of sifting is to put something dry, right, into this container that has nets, right? And the process of you pulling that thing back and forth 
puts air into that space. I need you to follow me. And when you put air in that space with that dry thing, it changes the texture. Good God Almighty. Jesus is good. The word is good. So it changes the texture of that ingredient. It changes the texture of that flour. It changes the texture of that uh, uh, um, of the sugar, which makes it easier to be used. Satan desires to sift you like wheat. But when you have returned, when you have recovered, when you have been restored, I need you to take your re- uh, calibrated, reprocessed, glory to God, uh, smoothed out, easier to use, easier to love, easier to talk to, not easily angered self, and go and strengthen somebody else. Mm -hmm. it, you put your dry situation, your dry faith, your dry life, I speak to those dry bones that they will live. The dry things in your life, God wants to put them in something. And, and listen, God sifts us. I do want you to understand. So you are saved through sifting and shifting. <laughs> Glory to God, it's good. You're saved through sifting and shifting. But when God does it, it does not come to destroy you. This does not come to destroy you. It comes to perfect your faith. If the devil does it and his hand is on the sifter, uh huh, he comes to break you down to nothing. Not just to not just to change the the uh, consistency of the ingredient, your faith. Uh huh. Your life, mm -hmm. your purpose. He changed, he comes to literally break it down to nothing and to destroy it if he's doing the sifting. But when God is doing the sifting, when God is controlling the handle on the sifter, it is, he comes to do it to, yes, change you before the better. It comes to, a uh, uh, reformat to create a processed vessel. Good God Almighty, a vessel. Don't don't run from the process, beloved. It, it it it's no different than the process of of getting the oil out of the olive. It's no different. It has to be pressed. It has to be stumped on. It got. It has to go through the process for the oil to come. But we want to jump out of the sifter. <laughs> We want to jump out of the sifter because we don't like what it feels like. But, but, but again, the process is that this dry thing goes into this instrument and it goes through a processing of the air mixing in with the ingredient to smooth and improve that ingredient so that it can be used. What is it used for? It's used now for baking. It's now used to be added in to something else to make the baking process, to make the baking process smoother. Ah, glory. Oh, Jesus. So your sifting comes to make your fire processes easier. Mm -hmm. Your sifting processes come to make your processes in life smoother. So when you go through the fire, when you go through the heat, you will not be destroyed. When you go through the flood, you will not drown. When you go through that season of lack, you won't feel like you got to pay, uh, you paying Peter, uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul. You ain't got to do that. You just going to wait on the Lord and be of good courage because he is going to strengthen your heart. Somebody say, I'm being sifted. That's what this is about. My marriage is being sifted. Hallelujah. My faith is being sifted. My health is being sifted, but I'm going to come through because the air, the Ruach of God, the Holy Spirit of God, good God Almighty Jesus, this is good to me. I don't know about y'all, but God just didn't bless me this morning. Oh God, I love you right now. Hallelujah. We're being sifted. We're being sifted. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
sifted so we can be shifted. We can move into a new space. We can move into a new place. Hallelujah. In our faith, God. Glory to God. That's good, Jesus. Let me tell y'all something. When I got up at 4 o'clock, 3.50, whatever it was, I was like, Lord, I do not have a word for these people. You got to help me. You got to help me because I'm just not feeling it. My side is hurting. I can barely turn to the right or to the left, but I'm being sifted. Hallelujah. Glory to God this morning. Somebody, need, yeah, I'm being sifted. I'm being sifted. I'm being sifted. The places in my life that was dry, God has mixed his air, his Holy Spirit with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to come out better. I'm going to come out smoother. I'm going to come out easier. I'm going to come out with my faith restored and my faith added to. Glory to God. I'll be able to be used in a greater way. Hallelujah for your glory and for your name's sake. Hallelujah, God. Bless the name of the Lord this morning. That's a good word. That's a good word. Somebody needs to understand you being sifted. So, so here, was, here was Peter being sifted. He was being sifted. And so the word of the Lord says that he was being sifted so he could be shifted into a new mindset. Uh-huh. You got to go through that so you can change your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to go through the sifting. You got to go through those things. He, he said, he said, uh, um, he said, Jesus said, I must need go through Samaria. It's what had to happen. If he did not go through Samaria, he would not have met the woman at the well whose life was changed by her encounter with Jesus Christ. And once she had this encounter, this encounter with Jesus she was shifted. The way she thought about where, how people worship and what this relationship looked like with God and who Jesus really was. She was shifted in her mindset. And once she was shifted, she, she too went home. Hallelujah. And she restored somebody. She brought someone into the household of faith when she went home and told her family, I met a man. Woo, God. Anybody meet the man? That man right there. That man right there is all right with me. So glory to God this morning. Glory to God this morning. Hallelujah. That's good. So you have been, you are being, and you have been sifted so you can be shifted. Amen. And so being shifted not only in position, but also in your faith and in your mindset. Now let me help us with something. Peter, Peter sifting this testing of his faith. Not only was Peter's position tested in, in the position that he had with Jesus, his posture of faith was also tested. Yeah, his position was tested where he stood with Christ and walked alongside of him, but also his posture of faith. These are the ways you too will be sifted so that you can be approved. Good God Almighty. So that you can be used to and for the glory of God. You too will, your position may change. Maybe you was up high and you go down low. Glory to God. Maybe you were up high and now you are down low. But it's, it's for a season because you're being sifted. Your posture of faith will change. It's going to be tested. He was denied. He denied Jesus three times. Three times before the rooster crowed. Now, interestingly, where I live in Indianapolis, years and years ago, these were cornfields out here. And uh, in this township, these were cornfields. And so we had neighbors, we had neighbors who had moved here from, I want to say Mexico, and I'm sure they're legal. Ain't nobody, don't, mm -mm, don't even get me started on that whole mess that's going on. Number 45, in the name of Jesus God, I pray. Hallelujah. So they decided to get a rooster. This was several years ago. This had to be about seven, eight years ago. They decide to get a rooster. Now, see, I thought roosters only crowed in the morning. I did. I thought they only crowed in the morning. 
But let me tell y'all something about roosters. Roosters also crow when they want to mate. Ha <laughs> ha! Glory to God! Woo! Jesus! Roosters also crow when they looking for a relationship. So they will crow. They will cock a doodle do uh, for that hen to pay attention to them. Uh huh. So we know that uh, Jesus right here is talking about in the morning these roosters crowing. But but when I would be sitting at my desk about eleven thirty or noon, that rooster would get to crowing outside my window across the street. And I'm like, in the name, why is he making noise in the middle of the day? I thought they only did that four day before the sun came up. Which one cute either, right? Because you tired, you sleepy, and here he go, cock-a-doodle doing. In the name of Jesus, the Lord showed me, good morning, good morning, uh, Brother Fine, good morning, uh, uh, Sister Hughes, good morning. And so the Lord showed me. Don't get thrown off about when the rooster crows, okay? Just know that it's a sign that somebody's position is about to change. Don't, there's a position change. There is a, a posture change. There is something that is going to change, hallelujah, before the sun comes up in the morning or before high noon. There, there is a change. There is a change that is coming. There is a change that is coming. You just have to keep your ears open Tuesday. You just got to keep your ears open. Hallelujah. Because I could never see. Well, that's not true. I could see him sometimes. But I couldn't always see the rooster. I couldn't always see where he was. He could be uh, behind a tree. He could be behind a house. He would cock-a-doodle-doo from anywhere. Good God Almighty. So before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me. So your 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 position is going to be sifted. Your your position in Christ, your position in life. The enemy will come after that. God will allow him to come after that. But remember, God's hand is on you. You're the one being sifted. You're the you're the you're the one being sifted. So God's hand is is on you. Sometimes God will allow us to be sifted because we are in dry situations. So he needs to change the uh, consistency of uh, the texture, the consistency of what that thing looks like. So he will allow the sifting if we let it and not run from it, trying to jump up out of the little sifting container. No, 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 no. Stay there and allow God to sift you. We ain't giving the devil no credit this morning. Even though the devil uh, desires to do it, uh, the Bible says here in the Amplified that he demanded. In, in another uh, translation, he said he requested, he asked. Well, that means that Jesus said, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, sift Tuesday. Go ahead. Go ahead and sift Yvette. Go ahead. You can sift Kendra. You can sift Fawn. You can sift Sarah. You can you can sift Deborah. You can sift Destiny. You know, just like he asked for Job. And, and he said, okay, you can mess with him, but, but don't put your hands on him. Because I'm the one controlling the sifting. Good God Almighty. He said, don't put your hands on him. Don't put your hands on him. You will not put your hands on them because they belong to me. But I'll allow you to test them. I'll allow you to do this. I'll allow you to do that. But you can't put your hands on them because I'm the one controlling the sifting. He desires to sift you like wheat. But I, Jesus said, I prayed for you. I prayed for you because I know there is a season, there is a day that you are going to come up out of this. Hallelujah. When you let the perfecting of your faith be done. So, so you are, you, your, your, your position, your posture, and your purpose is going to be tested. Your position, your posture, and your purpose. Peter's purpose was tested in the sifting process. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean, Minister Tate? What do you mean? What do you mean, Doc? What do you mean? How in the world, what are you saying? That his purpose was tested. Well, let me help you. Peter's purpose was to win souls. Peter's purpose was to be the one who preaches the gospel and in one day brings over 3,000. Peter's purpose was upon this rock, God was...
thank you. I speak to the airways. You will stop that looping, devil. You ain't got no control over here. So, so his purpose was tested. Yeah, this is good. God is, God is good. I'm getting a serious download this morning. So he said, he said, your purpose, the purpose is going, your purpose is going to be tested. In the sifting process. Why? Because God needs to sift you to shift you so that you can save others. Now, you don't have the power to bring salvation, but you have the power to share salvation that brings someone to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so in this process of understanding sifting, it's because you have to be proven in your purpose. That you won't shrink back. That you won't walk away. Because you get in the fire the first time. And now you jumping out. Sometimes, and I understand, I understand the fire don't feel good. But sometimes it's, it's a part. Ah, Jesus. It's the difference between the knife of a surgeon in a surgeon's hand versus a knife in my hand. A surgical knife in a surgeon's hand versus a surgical knife in my hand. When he cuts, it's to heal. If I cut you with that knife, I'm going to do some damage because I don't know what I'm doing. When God allows us to be sifted, to be shifted, it is for our purpose to be perfected, to be matured. Right? Because none's perfect. But when the Bible says the perfecting of our faith, it is the maturing of us. It is the maturing of our faith. And so we fight. We fight the process. We fight the shifting. We we fight the sifting. And God today wants to tell you stop resisting the shift. Stop resisting the sift. Stop it. God is trying to mature you so that every storm that comes, every fire that comes, every fiery dart, every fiery word, you ain't ready to fight. You ain't ready to put the Vaseline on and, and get greased up and fight. You ain't ready for your tongue to become a sword and cut somebody down. God wants to perfect you. But that requires, that may mean that your position, your posture, and your purpose will be sifted. And you will be shifted. Don't fight. I hear the Lord saying. And, and and Kendra, I don't know why your name just dropped in my spirit when I heard this. But if it's if it if it's you, um, then amen. Amen. He said, Don't resist the shifting of position. Don't resist the shifting of of a position whether you feel like it's a demotion or you feel like it's a promotion that you're not ready for yeah but it's coming and don't resist it because it's setting you up for something greater had Peter fought Christ even though he tried to he tried to find him y'all know what he said in that scripture no no no, no. I want to go with you I'm going to go with you I'm going to go with you I'm going to go I'm going to die with you I'm going to walk with you. And Jesus was like, dude, no, just go on. <laughs> just let me help you. Before the, the rooster crows, you're going to deny me. But it's okay. Because once you've done all that, you're going to return back to me. Remember when they got in the upper room, Jesus had to go tell them, go get Peter. Peter had went a fishing. Peter didn't know nothing about Jesus. He had gotten so far away in his position and in his posture that he had lost hope don't don't allow the sifting and the shifting of God and the perfecting of your purpose to cause you to get so far away from God but Jesus had already prophesied that he was going to return but sometimes he needs to call your name because you can't bring yourself back you can't deliver yourself hallelujah Hallelujah. Some of us, you can't. It's too big. It's too weighty. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how heavy that was on Peter? That he had denied Christ? That he's sitting somewhere thinking, oh my God, this is what Jesus said I was going to do. I've disappointed 
my daddy, God, I've disappointed Jesus. I've, I've turned away. Can you imagine what he was feeling? Yeah, I, I've been there. I've been there when I've disappointed God. I've been there. And and, and I, I've said it before. I've testified to it. I sat myself down. I didn't, I didn't need Pastor Hill to sit me down. When I knew I had done something against God, against his word, in disobedience and sin, whatever it was, in the guilt of it, the shame. But I had to shake myself because the word says there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. If you stay out there too long, the enemy will cause you to to wallow in guilt and in shame which which is which is the 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 encompassing of condemnation he will cause you to condemn yourself and if you stay out there long enough you become like a ship without a sail you become a ship on the waters by yourself that is not being taken care of you'll get waterlogged and you too will be condemned in your body because your soul is not being fed anymore. A soul that belongs to Christ. A spirit that needs to, to uh, spirit uh, uh, confirming and talking to spirit. So you need to be in church. You need to be around other believers. And not resist the household of faith. Good morning, Sister Deborah. And so, when you do not allow when you do not good morning uh sister latanya when you do when you when you do not allow the process to be fulfilled and you run from it you will cause yourself to become dry and out there you being sifted is by the devil in here in the household of faith being sifted is by god even once you mix with those other ingredients, because now you've been smoothed out. You're usable. Amen. You're ready to be used. And now you're in, in the, the other parts, the other things that have been sifted. The other parts of the cake are in the house of God. Somebody who, who was salty or is salty and they're being sifted. Good God Almighty. And they're in the household of faith. You got to mix with them. You got to mix with the person that's just so sweet and so kind and so loving. You got to mix with them. But for them to get smoothed out, that sugar in them. Because they, they was a little lumpy. Anybody ever get water mixed with some sugar? It gets hard, don't it? Mm -hmm. That's why they put salt in with sugar or uh, with different things so that it don't get lumpy and it don't get hard. Because the moisture of the world, the cares of the world will cause you to get a little damp. <laughs> will cause you too to, to get a little hard, hardened. And so it is important that all of our ingredients are mixed together. This is why you enter his gates. You, you find yourself in church among other believers. So that iron can sharpen iron. So that the household of faith can build each other up. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. So you are sifted to be shifted so that you can help save someone else. You can draw someone else to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. You now have a testimony. Look, I've been through that. Shoot, I've been through that. Let me tell you what God did. Let me tell you how he brought me out. Let me tell you what I had to do to walk in my healing. Let me tell you what I had to do to walk by faith. Let me tell you what grace looks like on my life and what it can look like on your life. This is why the things you have struggled in are the things that God wants to use to help advance and add to his kingdom. He wants to use those things. If it was drug addiction, if it was pornography, you've been delivered. If it was uh, the, the woman caught up in adultery or the man in adultery. If you were the person who lost your marriage but got it back on track. You were in the midst of a divorce right now in the name of Jesus. I just hear, the, okay, in the name of Jesus, I speak 
to everyone under the sound of my voice, everyone that this will be shared with, tag to, hallelujah, that's in the midst of a divorce, hallelujah, that has gotten divorced. Father, I pray for humility. I pray for a broken spirit and a contrite heart. I pray that they take responsibility for everything that they did to bring ruins to that marriage. Hallelujah. They won't blame her because she wasn't having sex or she wasn't encouraging him like he needed to be encouraged. So that woman came and gave him what his wife wasn't doing. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. She ain't going to blame him. Hallelujah. Because he wasn't being affectionate enough. He wasn't affirming her enough. He wasn't appreciating her enough. So that man that came and spoke uh, good things into her ears, she turned to him and had emotional affairs or intimate affairs. God, in the name of Jesus, I speak to humility. I speak that they will come broken, God, in the name of Jesus, saying, what must I do to get you back, baby? Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God. I pray for marriages right now, in Jesus' name, Father. Hallelujah, God. I pray, I pray, I pray for the broken spirit. I pray for the contrite heart. You said you would not deny that, oh God. Father, I pray for someone who is saying, this isn't what I want. This ain't what I want. I don't want to break up my family. I really don't. And God, so I pray, I pray that she receives his apology and he walks it out. Godly sorrow brings about repentance that wants to make his name right, that wants to make her name right. Hallelujah, God. There's a righteous indignation that is rising up in the name of Jesus because I know I was wrong. Hallelujah. And I know that God has forgiven me because I've asked God to forgive me. I've asked my spouse to forgive me. I've asked, oh God, hallelujah. I don't know why. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, your marriage was being sifted. It was being sifted to be shifted to another level, to a greater testimony. And you ran from it. You ran to a divorce lawyer. Good God Almighty, you ran from it because you couldn't find a way to forgive. You couldn't allow yourself to be so humble and some, so broken to say, if I got to give you my cell phone uh, uh, password, my Facebook password, hallelujah, if I got to check in three times a day, you got the right to show up whenever you want to show up. I'll stay in counseling until you forgive me. If that's a year, if that's five years, hallelujah, until we look up and this ain't an issue no more. Oh, God. Your marriage was being sifted by the enemy. God allowed it because he needed to get something out of you. And you ran from it. Ah, you ran. Good God Almighty, you ran. You weren't humble. You weren't broken. I hear you. I hear it. I hear the conversation. Why we got to keep talking about this? I thought we talked about that. I said I was sorry. How many times I got to say I was sorry? Dang. God, I pray for marriages. I pray for those who have not yet signed the papers that you'll restore. Hallelujah, God. You're able to restore. I pray for those who went ahead and went through it. But it wasn't your will that you'll start waking him up, waking her up to say, I want my wife back. I want my family back. I want my husband back. Hallelujah, God. Let them court each other again. Hallelujah, God. Let them re, re, reestablish what it means to have holy matrimony in you, oh God. This is my prayer. This is my prayer. This is my prayer. This is my prayer. In the name of Jesus. Ah, God. And so Peter, Peter's purpose, your purpose too, your purpose too, your spouse, your husband, your wife, they're tied to your purpose. You can go get another one if you want to, but the one you was married to was tied to your purpose. Now, God's still going to allow purpose to be fulfilled. Your way might be a little harder. Still going to allow purpose to be fulfilled. But you better get a broken spirit and a contrite heart in the name of Jesus. Good God Almighty, I feel that. So, whoo, Jesus, good God Almighty. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Hallelujah, God. I hear somebody, 
I want my marriage back, but he don't want it. Okay, well, let him live in disobedience. Uh-huh. Let him live in disobedience. The Bible says God will turn him over to it. And he'll, but he'll give him time. He'll give him time to repent. He'll give him time to get it right. He'll give him time to repent. He'll give him time to get it right. Her, him, it doesn't matter. But when you don't, he'll turn you over to it. And for a while, it'll look well. Everything will still look like it's prospering. But underneath, it's got dry rot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you didn't let the sifting, you didn't let the sifting continue. Ephraim, you're half-baked. You're half-baked. You only baked on this side, the side that everybody can see. Hallelujah. That the heat is shining down on. But you're not, you're not baked all the way through. You're still soggy and mushy on the inside. Anybody ever bit into some cornbread that one cooked all the way through and, and the, the uh, uh that one good? That one did, but the outside looked real pretty. Outside looked real pretty. So, Peter, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. I pray that your faith would not fail. And when you return, Go and restore the brother. Go and restore someone else. You've been delivered from something. God has shown favor on you and restored you back to a position. Back to a posture in him. Back to your purpose. Your purpose in a greater level. He's revealed. Go help somebody else. That's your assignment today. Go help somebody else. I contend that every Jewish person, the God Almighty, every African American should be speaking out. Every believer, every believer in Jesus Christ should be speaking out about what's going on in these, I almost call them concentration camps, forgive me, Lord. In these kennels in, in California and Texas and Florida where these children are being contained in kennels, human-sized kennels that my dog would be would have been in. Cages, kennels. We should be speaking out and contacting our congressmen. Why? Because we've been delivered from the cages of our mind. We've been set free. We were brought out of slavery. They were brought out of the Holocaust. We as Christians were brought out. Our chains were broken. We were set free from our captivity. Because the anointing was on someone. To preach the gospel, to teach the word, to set captives free, to call those in 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 uh, jail cells in their mind out. We should be blowing up the phones of our congressmen, calling them every day, two three times a day. On my page, I've continued to post the link that can tell you exactly where to go to contact your congressman. We got to stop only praying and get up off our knees and do something. He's given us eyes to see what is going on. He's given us ears to hear what is going on. He's given us a mouth to speak against what's going on. Fingers to dial a number. Feet to march against. Whatever it is, he's put us in the earth to deal with what's going on. And so we've all been sifted to help someone, to help those who do not have a voice, to help those babies that we watched on the news or listened to on the news who were crying out for their mommies and their daddies. It's, 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 I don't even know what the word is. Inhumane, sick, but like I said in Psalms 52, woe to you. Ha <laughs> ha! Woe to you, man. Uh-huh. Touch not the little ones. Suffer them not to come. That's what the word says. Amen, Sister Yvette. Amen. Suffer them not to come. He said, don't, don't stand in the way of the little ones. He said, and don't cause them to sin. He said, you who do, you should have a milestone tied around your neck and cast into the sea. If you stand in the way, if you cause them trouble, if you inflict them pain. That's the word. That's the word. 
That ain't Tuesday. That's the word. God ain't playing. They have ministering angels assigned to them, and they're seeing everything that the sessions and the pences and the trumps, all of y'all doing. And let me help y'all with something. Yep, I'm going this way on my 5 a.m. power prayer teaching because there's all of that. Let me help y'all with something. Just because he ain't saying nothing, he's not the one who made the law, the Pences and all of them other ones in Congress, Republican, Democrat, I don't care who you are. The very fact that you're not saying anything, the very fact that you feel like you can't, because if you do, he will talk so bad about you, you won't win your uh, the vote in November. So you going to sit and not say anything? Silence. Silence is an, is an empty voice of agreement. Silence is an empty voice of agreement. When you know something's wrong and you're not saying anything, the Bible says to know better and not do is a sin. Pence, Indiana, devout Christian, all of y'all. Caroline, whatever, the little uh, girl who's over the press people, her too, you're Christians. That's what you said. But you're not speaking against this? For what? The ends does not justify the means. Peter cutting off the soldier's ear, the means to stop Christ from going to the cross, The, the means did not justify the end. There was another way to do this. Good morning, Sister Courtney. Good morning, Sister Annette. Uh, uh, Annette. The end does not justify the means. Peter cursing out everybody. <laughs> Even though Jesus said, you're going to deny me. He didn't say, he didn't say how you was going to deny him. He, he didn't say, Peter, you're going to cuss out folk. He didn't tell him that. Peter had a choice about how he was going to deny Christ. He had a choice. He had a choice. But he chose to use his voice to do the wrong thing. God don't be more care about our voices on, on social media saying something if we not calling our congressman. To say we, you talk about you won't get a vote. You better do something about this. And don't, don't use these children as a pawn to help him get a wall. You just say no just to say no because that's the right thing to do. That's what you're going to do, whether he get his wall or not. And, and I'm talking about you're a Democrat, call the Democrats. You're a, you're a Republican, call the Republicans. You're a Republican, call the Democrats. You're a Democrat, call the Republicans. Call both sides. Yep, I know. I, I don't vote uh, typically. I don't vote Republican, but I'm still calling y'all because every Republican friend I have, I'm going to be telling them, girl, you don't, you don't agree with this, do you? Brother, do you agree with this? Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. Let the consciousness of the Holy Spirit bring about repentance. Woe unto you. Psalms 52. That's what he said. He said, woe unto you. You man. Yeah, he gonna get him. I, I ain't gotta pray about that. See, y'all ain't ready to pray like that. Pray like David. Break their jaw. Cause them to fall into the pit that they dug for me. The, cause them to get entrapped and ensnared in the traps that they're setting for other people. Yeah, that's how David prayed. Not because David was perfect, but because he was the righteousness of God. Because when he missed it, he knew how to say, Lord, forgive me. Because he was God's servant. Because he was God's child. So, you are being sifted to be shifted so that you can help save others and bring others out. So that you can go and restore someone else's faith. Everything that you have gone through. Every sifting, every fire, every storm. Everything you've been delivered from. Everything you are um, struggling with. That you stand up against. God wants to use that. To help someone else. For you to speak life into someone else. For you to encourage someone else. We are all ministers of Jesus Christ. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Amen, Sister Yvette. Cleave their tongue to the roof of their mouths. And once they stop talking, make them stop 
with these foolishness of policies. They're not policies. They're practices. They're not laws. Good God Almighty. They're, they're usurping their authority. They're misusing their authority and using these children as pawns to get what they want. It's sick and it's sad. It's some Holocaust slavery stuff. So hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You want to come out of any situation? Put the word on it, the blood, and the name of Jesus Christ. And you walk in your deliverance. Don't jump out of the sifting tool too soon. Don't jump out. Don't jump out. God's hand is on it. The devil ain't controlling that thing. God's hand is on it because you're his child. He'll let you be perfected. He'll let you be smoothed out. The, pride, the purpose of the sifting is for you to be smoothed out, for to get all the lumps out. Hallelujah. So that the wind, the breath of the Holy Spirit can get in you and push all of that icky stuff out and smooth you out so that you can be used. Somebody can, can come into your uh, vicinity and, and encounter you and they'll taste you and see that the Lord is good because it's through your attitude. It's through your good morning. It's through your smile and how you doing. And somebody say, you're a Christian, aren't you? I am. And there's someone that God has given you an assignment to encourage, to love on, to inspire. Amen. So I love you. I love you with the love of the Lord. I pray that this word is falling up on good ground. And I thank you for the hearts of your people. I thank you for Lady uh, Pearson, God. I thank you for Kendra. I thank you for Q. I thank you for Yvette, God. I thank you, God, for Dominique. And I thank you for Tracy. I thank you for Annette, God, in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for Courtney, Kendra, God, in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for Latanya and for Fawn and for those who came on and got off. I thank you for Jean, God, in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for uh, uh, Sister Hughes, God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for Kimberly, Lord. Hallelujah, God. I thank you for Donna, God. I thank you for Deborah, God. I thank you that this word is on good ground with destiny. I thank you for Danielle and Sister Fry, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, I thank you that your word is good. I thank you that it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. God, I thank you that someone has a greater understanding of the purpose of of sifting to be shifted, God, so that they can go and save, restore uh, uh, the brethren, God. I thank you in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you, God, that we confess your word, God. Hallelujah, God. So we cannot be condemned by the things of this world, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We confess your word. We, we commune with your word, oh God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We commune with Jesus. We confess Jesus. Hallelujah, we commune with Jesus. We confess Jesus. God, I thank you that there is now, therefore, no condemnation, no guilt, no shame for those who are in Christ Jesus, oh God. I thank you for those you called. Hallelujah. You perfected and those you perfected God. Hallelujah, God. You will raise them up, God, for your purpose, God. Hallelujah, God, that it shall be fulfilled in this time, this season, oh God. I thank you in the name of Jesus, God. Marriages are being restored. Children are coming home. The sifting has been continued, uh, has been has been discontinued. They're done with the sifting. Now it's time for them to change uh, positions in the name of Jesus, God. They're shifted into a new position, God. They're returning home, God. They're seeing their spouse in a new way, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. They were sifted on their job and now a new position is coming. In the name of Jesus, they were sifted in their faith, oh God. And now their physical man is being restored, God. I declare it to be so. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, and we trust you for what you're doing. Hallelujah before the foundations of the world. Glory to the Lamb of God. Father God, I pray. I speak into their spirits, oh God. Hallelujah. I speak to the dry thing, God. God, that had to be sifted, God. Hallelujah. So the impurities could come out, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And like the, the, the shaft goes into the air, oh God, everything that is unlike you is blown into the wind. And I declare it shall never return. Hallelujah, God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that they are being used for your purpose and for your glory, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we bless your name today. And we love you. We know, God, that there is absolutely, positively none like you in all the earth. And we love you, Daddy. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I pray again that this word has fallen upon 
good ground and you are encouraged today to not jump out. Don't jump out of the fire. Don't jump, jump out of the sifting. Let God perfect the things that concern you and the things that concern him so that he can use you. You can be meat, sifted flour, sugar, salt. You're no longer dry. You're able to be used for the master's purpose. Amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. The Lord says the same. We'll be back. Share with someone. Tag someone. Tell someone to join us at 5 a.m. Let's just take this thing to the next level. See you next Tuesday. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless.